Artemis, what's up you all? How you doing? Okay, so much to tell you. First of all, one drop of love, so many great things. Chandra got booked us at, in Tempe, Arizona at Marcos Deniza High School. We did two shows back to back with high school students, 1500 students. So about 750 to 800 each, juniors and seniors first, and then freshmen and sophomores. It was just fantastic. I got a t-shirt. Oh my goodness, my t-shirt collection is growing. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> and I got a coffee mug. Okay, I'm leaving for Utah Monday morning because we are doing the show for the University of Utah School of Social Work. And this is their Voices of Diversity Social Justice series, and it's their 10th anniversary. And One Drop of Love is the closing act for that. So I'm very excited. That'll be this Tuesday night, 6 p.m. in Utah. And then the first week of April, I'm doing the Museum of Tolerance, and then Philly, Philadelphia, Abington Friends School. And that's gonna be for their Many Voices diversity series. And that one is for parents at the school. And then at the end of April, I am the keynote for the Mixed Heritage Conference at UCLA. So, oh my goodness, so much going on for one drop and it's just all incredible and exciting. Chandra noticed that the show is running a little bit over. Uh, usually it's an hour and it's been running about an hour and seven, an hour and eight minutes. So I wanna look at what's happening. Is it pacing? Does it have to do with the number? Of course, when there are more people, it takes longer because I'm going out and interacting with the audience. But that's something that we're looking at, whether the pacing needs to change or whether it's okay. But of course, when we perform for a school, we have to keep that in mind because students have to go to another class or at least they have to know how long it's gonna take ahead of time. Okay, I have some recommendations for you. First of all, have you seen Zootopia? I wanna know what you think of it. I mean, I, the first time I saw it, I read a friend's Facebook post who I really respect and admire, and she was like, Zootopia is all about racial profiling. And I was like, whoa, whoa, oh, what, what, really, for real? So I went and saw it by myself, and I cried because I loved it so much. I thought that it did a really great job of bringing up questions around gender and race and class in ways that young people can understand and that adults, they were very, very clear and accessible, but also using some really challenging themes uh, to get their point across. And I just thought it was really well done. But then I texted with my brother and he was like, well, I don't know, were the predators only supposed to be black people? And I was like, I don't think so because Remember in the beginning, there was the fox who was the bad guy, like the bully, and he was, he had a Southern accent that sounded white Southern. And again, here I go with my stereotypes. But anyway, I'm really curious what you thought, especially if you have children. How did you feel about this movie? I, I really want to know. Uh, Tish, Arana, what did you think? Like, I'm so, I'm dying to know. Is Zoe Fanchen, like, would this be a good movie for her to see or not? I'm so curious. Another recommendation is Mashable did an article. Nine YouTube channels that will make you smarter about social justice. So you know, I mean, first of all, I was following, I was already subscribed to three quarters of them, but I was there were some that I didn't know about. So I went ahead and subscribed. So I'm putting a link, um, check those out. Okay, another thing, check out Susan Laurie Parts. She's a great playwright. And she's doing this series called Watch Me Work, which is that she goes into a space and works, like it writes a play. And you have the opportunity to watch her work and write a play and watch her process and interact with her and ask her questions. And it's just like so great to allow people to, to be there and watch and learn from what she's doing. It's so encouraging. So I'm putting a link to the videos of her doing Watch Me Work. All right, I wanna uh, shout out some folks that are watching the videos. So Carol Banker, what's up girl? Alex Regalado, oh my goodness. She's our editor for One Drop of Love. I think I've told you about her before, but um, she's got this great video. There's a link for that also. She did it with her team from the website called twig how to which you should also check out and there's a link to that here go 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 alex i'm so proud of you 
do it and I'm voting every day and I'm getting other people to vote. So let's let's get you to win this and uh, and I hope you just keep making, I know you will, just keep making more amazing content like you are. Okay, last thing. I freaked out this morning because um, one of my first, like an early this week as an art artivist video, I talk about LaGuardia Cross who is like a famous YouTuber and does these great um, videos with his toddler. And he started off with this great statement about success and what is a specific goal that he had. That was how he started um, vlogging, this goal that he had and he was gonna reach the goal and he was saying it out to the world so that you know he could be held accountable. And so I talked about him in that video, in the Oscar So White video, and he left me a comment today. So, oh my goodness, thank you so much for watching it. And thank you for your work, you are inspiring. Thank you for the comment. All right, everybody, that's another This Week as an Artivist. I hope you have a great week. Thank you for watching and tuning in. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you like the videos, and, and also tell me what I should be watching and tell me what you're up to. I would love to help support you as well. All right, everybody have a great week. Bye-bye.